Uh, the next speaker that I'd like to welcome to the stage is Catherine Thomas. Uh, Catherine spent uh, 20 years developing people and uh, working for organisations such as PricewaterhouseCoopers and Maya. She's worked uh, all around the world and uh, now with her own consultancy business is responsible for um, developing leaders that are focused on um, developing their people. So please welcome Catherine to the stage. Thanks, Ashley. So I'm going to start with a couple of stories. The first story is about the first time that President John F. Kennedy was visiting NASA headquarters back in 1961. While touring the facility, he introduced himself to a cleaner who was mopping the floor. And he asked him, what do you do here at NASA? The cleaner replied, I'm helping put a man on the moon. Perhaps you've heard the story about Christopher Wren, who was one of the greatest English architects, who walked one day unrecognised amongst the men who were building St Paul's Cathedral in the middle of London, which he had designed. What are you doing? He inquired of one of the workmen. And the man replied, I'm cutting a piece of stone. And as he went and he put the same question to another man, and that man replied, I'm earning five shillings and tuppence a day. And to the third man, and you know where this is going, to the third man, he addressed the same inquiry, and the man answered, I'm helping Sir Christopher Wren build a beautiful cathedral. That man had vision. He could see beyond the cutting of the stone, beyond the earning of his daily wage, to the creation of a work of art, the building of a great cathedral. Both stories show how even the most mundane job can be seen as meaningful with the right mindset and under good leadership. Today, more and more employees, as Rob has already attested to, demand much more than a salary from their jobs. Money may lure people into jobs, but purpose, meaning and the prospect of interesting and valuable work determines both how long they'll stay, their tenure, and how hard they'll work while they're on the job. Finding meaning at work is becoming increasingly important for our workers and it's the challenge I set for you today. Research consistently shows that people experiencing meaningful work report better health, well-being, teamwork and engagement. They bounce back faster after setbacks and are more likely to view mistakes as learning opportunities than failures. In other words, People at work are more likely to thrive and grow when they experience their job as meaningful. I'm contributing to something. So what does that mean for you? Businesses with a stronger and clearer sense of purpose tend to also have better financial performance. Your people are willing to go the extra mile when they experience a sense of value for what they're doing. Unsurprisingly, the most successful companies in the world are also the best places to work. So let's see if in the next 20 minutes or so, we can make your business one of the best places to work. That's my challenge today. How am I going to do that? I hear you ask. Basically, I'm going to be asking you some pretty important questions. Here's my first question to you. Are leaders born or are they made? I think the answer is a resounding yes to both. The fact is, while some people seem to have innate leadership talent, others must work at developing their leadership ability. I consider everyone here is a leader in one way or another. Leadership is about influencing and impacting people, and everybody, whatever the nature of your current job is, has a responsibility to influence and lead other people. So today I'm going to focus on who you are as a leader of your business and how you behave as a leader and how you can turn your business into one of the best places to work. True leadership is about the example and actions that we deliberately and authentically take so people choose to follow us. Perhaps Peter Drucker, who's one of my leadership gurus, said it best. If you think you are a leader and no one is following you, you're just taking a walk. My perspective of your farming businesses today, informed by spending some time here yesterday and doing a bit of research, is that you are immersed in a sea of change. Truly global markets, leading and experimenting with innovative practices, change happening at astounding speed, diversification of your businesses, competitive pressure for far greater than it has ever been, and all the while you're trying to adopt cost reduction strategies, efficiencies to ensure that you remain competitive. 
In addition, you're keeping up with overseas trends in production, advances in genetics, efficient animal production, livestock farming best practices, all the while managing animal welfare issues. You've got a lot on your plate. In the midst of all these pressures, I know that your people, your workers, your employees, your family members who work for you are a primary competitive advantage. Yet, sadly, according to many studies, less than one third of most workforces, most employees, rural or otherwise, are actually actively engaged in their work, loving what they do. That means nearly two thirds of people across organisations are just biding their time. I've spent my entire career focused on learning and leading and mostly supporting others to learn about leading. To me, leading others is the most challenging yet inspiring responsibility that I have. That is true in both my professional and in my personal life. Every day I have an ambition to inspire the people who work with me to be the best that they can be. It's that simple that they thrive and add value in their world. Sometimes that even means supporting people who work for me to stop working for me because they'll only reach their full potential and add value in their world if they move to work somewhere else. So my, my objective to develop people means that maybe the conversation needs to be had, you need to move on. You're not going to add value and thrive while you continue working in this role. Question number two, the big question. Why do you do what you do? Beyond to make money, since making money doesn't fulfil a higher purpose, why do you do what you do? If you don't know what you do, how can you expect your people to follow you? I suspect you know what you do and you know how you do it, but I wonder if you know why. What's your personal passion, your deep inspiration, why do you do what you do? Who do you serve? Great leadership is about serving others. The best leaders inspire their people and they know their why. We will consider some great leaders during this presentation and I bet you all know their whys. Why do you do what you do? What gets you out of bed in the morning? I've educated leaders all over the world, Japan, Malaysia, Malaysia United Kingdom, Europe, Singapore, and I always ask, why do you do what you do? If you don't know why you do what you do, how can you expect your people to follow you? Simon Sinek, a contemporary leadership guru who describes himself as an optimist, who believes in a brighter future for humanity, says, for those who hold a leadership position, creating an environment in which the people in your charge feel like they are part of something bigger than themselves is your responsibility as a leader. So, today my job is to help you do three things differently if you want your business to be one of the best places to work, and who doesn't? Number one, find your why and be confident to share it with your employees. The reason I get out of bed every morning is. Number two, know your personal values. Know what you stand for and what you don't stand for and be confident to share that with your employees. And number three thing I'm going to talk to you about today is know that by communicating what is important to you, you will inspire your employees to step up, stay up, work hard, and that they are part of something important. Three things that we're just going to cover in this presentation. So, think about this. The average employee, average worker, works 1,842 hours a year. That adds up to a scary 92,100 hours over a 50-year career of work. Sometimes it's easy to forget why we do what we do, because we're just busy doing it. The research is clear, though. Individuals are more fulfilled and businesses perform better when they are built on a foundation of a clear and authentic purpose. Having a sense of purpose is actually critical to our health and well-being. A recent longitudinal study of people over 25 years found that people who demonstrate a sense of purpose in their lives, who know why they do what they do, have a 50% lower risk of death. And who doesn't want that? Compared with those who have said they were more or less aimless. 
And it didn't seem to matter when people found their direction, in their 20s, 30s, 50s. <coughs> Finding your purpose reduces the risk of death because you've got something to live for. Employees with a purpose have a 63% higher level of fulfilment in their work. I know why I do what I do, therefore I'm engaged and fulfilled. Research from Deloitte shows that purpose-driven companies have 40% have higher levels of retention. And Rob's talked to you about the complexities of sourcing and recruiting staff. 40% higher retention, they stay with you longer when they know why. And thinking about our younger workforce, 84% of millennials, most of them, say that making a difference is more important than recognition. I'm here to make a difference. I'm not here for the recognition and the pay. That helps, but it's not the main reason I want to work for you. Finding a purpose can be the rallying cry for your team, and it's the, one of the first steps to make your business one of the best places to work, which is the goal. So, it's time to find your why. When you meet new buyers of your product, I'm guessing you tell them what you do. I breed pigs. I offer the highest quality product at the best possible price, lower than any competitor. Want to buy some. There's really no explanation about why you do what you do. It's a rational approach. This is what I do. This is how I do it. But as soon as a buyer finds a better deal, a better price, they'll be gone because there's nothing compelling or unique about you or what you're doing or what you're saying. There's no explanation around why you do what you do. People buy your why. What if you start with why? Our family business is built on a tradition of shared value for the importance of combining leading practices in animal production and welfare. That's my why. We believe in setting the benchmark for others to follow. That's why we exist. Want to buy some? Totally different, right? Leading with a why has a deeper, more emotional and ultimately more influential value, particularly if your customers or employees share your beliefs. It's human nature to go from the easiest to understand to what's hardest to understand. Most people think, act and communicate from the outside in. What do I do? How do I do it? Oh, I don't know why I do it. But those who inspire us think differently. They think, act and communicate from the inside out. We talk about why we do what we do. What Rob talked about within Hydro Tasmania is why we do what we do, to be a clean energy business. That's why we do what we do. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Do your workers know why you do what you do every day? We know there's a common pattern of behaviour that shows up in business owners who have inspired, skilled and committed staff. They think, act and communicate similarly. Why does your business exist? Why should anyone care? Each of us has only one why. It's not something that changes. It's not a statement about who we aspire to be. It expresses who we are at our natural best. At its core, the why is your story of origin. If you think back over your life, look at the past experiences you've had, the people who've influenced you, the highs and lows, your standout memories. Retrieve them bit by bit and you'll find your why. You'll find why you do what you do. Themes will emerge as you reconnect with your past and they'll become the foundation of your why statement. Your why statement should be simple and clear, actionable, focused on the effect you have on others and expressed in, a, in very positive language. This is how you craft your why statement. It's not hard. And if as an outcome of today you had a why statement, it would have been worth my while being here. The first blank in this statement is the contribution you make to the lives of others. What's your contribution? The second blank is the impact of that contribution. So here's my why, why I do what I do. To unlock potential in people so that they are at their best always. 
That's why I do what I do. And I share that widely with anybody who works with me. What's your why? What's your purpose, cause or belief? People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Just one sentence. Simple doesn't mean easy, though. If you can make it in one sentence, you and your employees are more likely to remember it. It's sticky. If you can find this sentence easy to repeat, so will your people. Once you know why, you thrive and so do the people around you. I don't expect this to become your why. <laughs> this is my why. You need to come up with your own why, even though you're taking photos of it. Keep, <laughs> keep it in front. Keep it up front and centre. Say it over and over to your people until they're sick of hearing it and you're sick of saying it. Display it every day. Stick it up on the wall. Repeat it every day. So, that was the first step towards making your business one of the best places to work. The first thing I've asked you to do differently is to know your why. Now, let's consider the second step. What do you value? What's important to you? It's time to focus on your how. Let's uncover your personal values. And you're going to do a bit of work here. You're going to not listen to me. You're going to think. Values are not aspirational. They don't express who we want to be. They ex express how we actually behave, how we show up, what's important to us, the things we actually do when we are at our best, how we show up, how we behave, and how we don't behave, what we stand for and what we don't stand for. The hows bring your why to life. Your business will live and die by your leadership. It's how effective you are about communicating your why and establishing a values-driven culture that determines your business results and how you perform. The purpose of leadership is to turn your values into a compelling cause for others. Let's consider some exceptional value-based leaders. I told you that we'd, I'd reference some of these people. These are people who you will know. Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi never wavered from his ultimate belief using non-violent practices to achieve independence for India. Mother Teresa, known for unwavering vow to help the world's needy. Mother Teresa fought for the poor, the sick, the orphaned and the dying. She, everybody absolutely knew what she stood for. Martin Luther King, another exceptional leader, led the civil rights movement based on his belief of racial equality through peaceful measures. Nelson Mandela fought to the fought to end apartheid and bring democracy to South Africa. These leaders didn't try to change their followers' goals or ambitions, but these leaders helped their followers realise and fulfil their true goals. These leaders remain consistent and clear on their values, never once wavering. You would have all worked with some great leaders, people who have inspired you, I'd like to suggest that they actually showed their values at work. You knew what they stood for. They, how they behaved and how they showed up influenced you to have high regard for them. Think about the people who have had that impression on you, the people who you have chosen to follow. Values determine behaviour. Behaviour determines performance. They're all linked. Values are the foundation for strong performance. What we care about determines how we behave, which determines how we perform. Let's look at, a little more deeply at values-driven driving actions. Take, for example, the value of integrity. When you value integrity, it matters to me. It leads to the belief that being honest and authentic is important and makes a positive difference in working with others. The belief leads to thoughts about how you expect your people to demonstrate integrity through words and actions, which in turn governs their choices about, what they, about doing what is right, about telling the truth, about doing what they say they will do. Integrity-based choices result in observable and measurable behaviours that build trust with employees and customers. Collectively, these behaviours determine specific performance and ultimately business <laughs> results. So there's an absolute link between what's important to me and my business results. 
When your people know who you are and what you're about, they'll choose to stick with you. Your values define what is and isn't acceptable, and they become your code of behaviour. If you tell your people what's important to me, they will stick with you. Your values can also attract people. We talked, Rob talked about sourcing and retention. If you know your values, that becomes something that's very tangible for people. Values build teams and goodwill and help people make good decisions, particularly in volatile times. When times are tough, people know what you stand for. They become your foundation. Knowing and accepting what you value takes effort. Davis H. Taylor says, your personal core values define who you are and a company's core values ultimately define the company's character and brand. This is how we show up. For individuals, character is destiny. For organisations, culture is destiny. And it makes good business sense. A 10-year study showed that organisations with strong corporate values... They know what they stand for, consistently outperform those with weak corporate values. It makes good sense. So, are you ready for some more questions? What values do you hold? Do you know? Do your workers know? To know your personal value system, you need to think of the things that are important to you. Define your character. Supply meaning to your life and work. Influence the decisions that you make. Compel you to take a stand. Provide an atmosphere in which you are most productive. Your values enable you to show up at your best always and authentically. Now it's time to take some action right now. Pick up a pen and some paper. At this point, you should be picking up a pen and grabbing a piece of paper if you haven't already got one. From this list of values, I told you you're going to do some work, choose more than 10 personal values. If you want to add some that aren't on the list, that's fine. Write down the things that are important to you, what you stand for. Off you go. Ready, set, go. It's not hard. What are your values? I want you to walk out of here with a bit more clarity than you had when you walked in. Now comes the harder part. I know you haven't finished. I know. It takes longer than three minutes to come up with your values. You get the idea. I want you to think about what are your essential values. So from that very small list that you've created, originally I was going to ask you to choose five, but we won't have time for five. Pick one. Pick one of the values that you've written down, turn to the person beside you and tell them why you chose that one value and what you do to lead by example. So this is a conversation. If you're not sitting with anybody, turn around and talk to the person behind you. Pick one value and tell the person beside you why you picked it and what you do about it, why that value is an essential value for you. You've got one minute, so you've got to talk fast. OK, these conversations need longer. This, you get the gist. It's important to identify your values. It's important to know what you stand for, and it's important to share your values. Now, some more big questions. I told you I was all about asking questions. I don't have answers. I just have lots of questions. No, I have a few answers. Are you living your personal values? Once you know what they are, are you living them? How do your employees know what you stand for today? Do they? Should they? Will they? Why don't they? How can you walk the talk when you return to your business after this event? What can you do differently after this? What are you prepared to do so that your values are shared with your employees? So, just to recap as we wind up, I've asked you to know your why, why you do what you do. I've asked you to know your essential values, and you've just started to think about your essential values. 
Now, the final of the three things that I suggest you to do, it's time to think about how you communicate both of those things. The only way you'll make a difference to your people is if you communicate your why and your how. From my experience working with leaders around the world, the best method for selling your purpose is to reveal moments of truth, to tell stories, authentic stories, real stories of how you know your values are real to you and where they came from. This, this happened to me and this caused me to value integrity above everything else when this happened. Share your personal experiences, the glorious and the traumatic that shaped you. Tell the stories of what you stand for by being vulnerable, open and authentically sharing what is most important to you you're offering proof of your commitment to these values. This is what I stand for. This is what matters to me and this is why. Reveal your moments of truth, the stories of how you know your values. Knowing your core values anchors your leadership for yourself and for your people. Showing why your core values help builds trust with your people. Knowing your why underpinned by clear and compelling values makes your farm an attractive place for good staff. They want to come and work for you and, more importantly, they don't want to leave. If you want skilled, trained, loyal, committed future leaders who share your inspiration, it's time to share your why and your how. Give them a reason to go to work, not just a place to go to work. <laughs>